Well, I uh, I can speak to the state the adoption of the state constitution. There, uh, it was voted on by the public. Uh, there was uh, there were more people that voted for it than against it. Uh, there was a challenge to the adoption of the Constitution that was raised based upon uh, the issue of whether a majority of the voters voted for it or a simple plurality. That issue went to the Montana Supreme Court, was litigated fully, and uh, the court decided that adoption by was by the required number of voters had taken place. So it was adopted by... And, it, and those those court records are available to the public. All right. In terms of the uh, CAFR issue and a double set of books, I mean, uh, Montana has very strong constitutional provisions that require an open government. And if uh, you know if somebody has evidence that there's another set of books out there, I'd like them to either bring it to the legislature or bring it to a district court. And of course, so it can be resolved. Of course, there is no question that the revenue picture is starting to look b- uh, more bleak as as the days go by. Uh, here, here's what uh, Governor Schweitzer had to say, uh, talking about the property tax bill. He says, "Look, I didn't sign the bill, but of course, by allowing it to become law, essentially, uh, you know, he could have vetoed it. But nonetheless, he says." Hey, Governor Schweitzer said, quote, these people on the Senate Taxation Committee, they didn't listen to anybody last time. Why would they expect that they would come back and do anything different? He was basically criticizing the legislature and, and talking about why there is no need for a special session to correct. Um, you, and, of course, we, we've got both parties in the room here. Montana Department of Revenue Director Dan Buck says the process is working and that the vast majority of Montanans won't see a major change in, in the amount of taxes that they pay. Uh, What's both of your thoughts? Was was the bill flawed, or is, is the process just working? Is it just tough economic times and, and the housing bubble? What are we what are we looking at here? What what happened? What's your take on the governor's uh, uh, comments? Well, um, I worked on uh, I was on the interim last interim I was on the property tax reappraisal task force, and um, you know a couple of things happened. We knew that the real estate market was sort of going uh, through some ups and downs, and we actually extended the date six months by which we would cut off the values. And that had reverberations probably in terms of when we were getting the data. Then when the session came about, um, I would say that I (laughs) probably spent over 40 hours a week just on reappraisal. And I'm not trying to – and so I – I guess I would respectfully disagree with the governor. I think we tr- we worked, um, we developed policy based on the information that we had. I think everyone tried to be as accurate as possible. I think that with any legislative initiative, it's not always perfect, and that's the great thing about having the interim committees and having people come in. We are working during the interim to look at these things so we call circuit breakers, which are ways to sort of help people with special circumstances. So, you know, it's a, I won't say it's incomplete, it's a work in progress, and we've all identified some issues that we want to continue to tackle, but uh, I don't think that there was any malface at all on anyone's part. Uh, we all worked pretty well together. We might not disagree with, we may disagree with the final solution, but I think it was a pretty good group of workers. All right. Uh, Democratic Senator uh, Kim Gillen, chair of the Interim Revenue and Transportation Committee. We'll hear from a Republican State Senator Jeff Esman on that right after we take uh, this one break, and then we'll be back with more here on Voices of Montana uh, right after this, uh, and also take more of your phone calls, 866-NBS-LIVE. The fastest hour in Montana radio continues. Call 1-866-627-5483. And good morning, folks. We're back with Voices of Montana broadcasting statewide. Uh, That was really our only commercial break for this whole hour. We're uh, doing a special program as we talk uh, with uh, both parties. We hear from uh, Democratic State Senator Kim Gillen, who's chair of the Interim Revenue and Transportation Committee, and also Republican State Senator Jeff Essman, who chairs the State Senate Taxation Committee, talking about property taxes. Uh, Lots of news uh, on a meeting last week that got uh, fairly emotional. In fact, uh, uh, it was written, uh, and I heard from from some folks who were in the room that said that 
that, that the Department of Revenue director, uh, you know, voice cracked as he, you know, talked and, and heard the concerns from folks around the state uh, talking about the latest uh, property reappraisals. Of course, a lot of that uh, looking back on, on, you know, the housing market and, and just the escalation in home prices and values in the, the Flathead and the Gallatin in particular. Uh, we're still joined here by uh, Senator Gillen and Senator Essman. Uh, Senator Essman, we kind of ended uh, just before that break. I asked the question. I shared some quotes from Governor Schweitzer, kind of basically saying, "Look, it was a, you know the legislature's fault that passed a bad bill. That's why he says he didn't sign it, although he did allow it to go into law." Uh, we heard from Senator Gillen on that. Uh, uh, your take on on on, on Governor Schweitzer's uh, remarks? Well, Aaron, I think the. Um The legislature worked really hard on this issue. There was a special select committee appointed by leadership in the the House and the Senate. That special committee met uh, two, three times a week. The meetings lasted three hours at a minimum. There were binders. I think we ended up with binders that were three or four inches thick, multiple binders that thick, the meetings were all well attended by representatives of, of uh, various groups and individuals around the state. All those meetings were public. Um, I think we did a really the best job we could. As let's face it, we're we are am, we are politicians, but we're amateur politicians. We go up, leave our homes, we serve for 90 days. We're not we're not getting the steady paycheck like the governor is in terms of pursuing public policy in the state. All right, let's jump back in the phone lines. We've got Larry in Columbia Falls on line one. Good morning, Larry. Uh, good morning. Uh, I just had a comment. The, you know, I work for a couple lived down on Flathead Lake, and their property taxes. Um, well, they have a nice house, but they increased by three times here just before they went back to Nevada. <laughs> But um, I lived over in San Juan County in Washington. In that area, the property taxes, or I mean the property prices, are completely driven by the tax assessors. Like nobody can get the value of their property according to the tax assessor. You know they can't sell their property for that amount of money. Now, now starting to see that here now that what we have to look forward to or is this way things are going to be I'll take your call I'll okay take. all right thanks Larry good to hear from you uh, either one Senator Gillen Senator Essman uh, your thoughts on that is uh, are we seeing something different from the past or or maybe does it go back to the larger question of uh, is that a, you know does the buck I guess to, to use an analogy does the buck stop with with bucks and the Department of Revenue and uh, are they do they appear in your eyes to be to be following uh, the intent and, and and is this following historically with how uh, property values have been appraised by the Department of Revenue and then of course taxes assessed? Aaron, I think the um, the effort the department made was to get an accurate appraisal. The legislature's can, heard testimony last week. We'll hear it again in February about the accuracy of that job. The uh, we I do want to point out that the uh, we were acting in, we were meeting in a time where many of us felt that values were starting to fall in Montana. Uh, w- that is the reason that uh, the, the, the appraisal date was delayed from January 1, 2008 to July 1, 2008, was to try to, you know, capture um, that decline. And uh, we included a provision in the, in the, bill that was passed that requires the department to keep uh, track of those values over the next two-year period so that if that uh, that decline is there, it's statistically significant, uh, we will have some facts that we can go in and work on the issue again so that uh, people are not paying taxes based upon valuations that exceed what they can receive for the property. I think we were looking ahead.